We finally did it, ladies and gentlemen. We have finally finished the first four straight-to-video Scooby-Doo movies animated by Mook. So how did Cyber Chase end things off? Well, if you happen to see my Letterboxd review of it, yeah, it went really down. It just... Uh, how can... You, how can Warner fuck this up badly? Especially when you had Zombie Island, Witch's Ghost, and Alien Invaders. This time, like Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, Warner Brothers had a lot of control over the production as they were just um, absorbing the company, uh, Hanna-Barbera. And they brought in someone who had never worked in animation before. And the creative team were like, were kind of frustrated with this. This was also the last animated Scooby-Doo project to be um, executive produced by William Hanna. But because he passed away in March 2001, though his last um, credit with anything Scooby-Doo related was the live action film the year later. So, I just want to get my problems out of the way because, like, okay, so this one's a way more lighthearted than the previous three ones because, like I said, Warner Brothers was taking control over the company and they wanted to, like, they were wanting to, like, revert things back to the same old, same old as the future films fo follow the exact same formula as the TV show. And I, I just don't know. I mean, I think this could have been able to like be just like the other ones, but they didn't. This is also complemented by the fact that this is the first Scooby-Doo movie to be digitally colored. And I just don't think this animation style, or the, the, I just don't think this animation style or these character, this art style works well in digital painting. That's why, like, I was, I really liked the animation for um, the last three films, which are all cell animated, but they just had so much detail put into it. It felt like there was actual effort being put into those films. Whereas with here, they're just. It just doesn't look right. There's also a lot of animation errors, and ugh, it's just it's just disappointing. The jokes are also just not right. I mean, there were two jokes that I did get a good chuckle out of, like um, whenever the gang was splitting up and. Oh, and the Santa Claus joke. There's also one, a couple things that kind of, like, in terms of errors, like, there was also, like, Shaggy saying they, the cafeteria ran out of food, yet in the background you could see more food, so I'm calling bullshit on that. Also, one noticeable error that just threw me off guard was when they were on the moon, Velma was talking... But in Daphne's voice. Uh, what? Uh, they just let that slide? How did they not? How did they not catch that? How? Oh my goodness. Yeah, and just like. A, 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 also, some of the line delivery here feels a bit flat like I noticed like a couple times whenever Fred is talking he's just like he should like whenever the phantom virus is around he should be worried but yet he just kind of says it in the most monotone way possible um still um the the cast still does a pretty good job um Scott Innes 
still great. Uh, Frank Welker is mostly really good. Um, BJ Ward is like the only like consistent like one that I think is great. This is also the first time in Scooby Doo history that Gray the Lie voices Daphne. Um, yeah, since uh, the late Mary Kay Bergman was wasn't there anymore, um, they brought in Gray, and she would continue to voice Daphne for many many years to come. And I do think she she gets better like the more projects she's in. I also just wasn't really a fan of the Phantom Virus. He just. I don't know, he just didn't seem much like a threat. I mean, I do like it whenever he feels weak, like, with the magnet. And you, you know what? Alright, there's also something that just kind of just irked me during the final battle. So Fred was, like, getting walking close with the magnet of the Vantavirus that he just slips on a tennis ball and the magnet just goes underneath an arcade machine. Here is a better idea. How about you keep the magnet and possibly just stab the phantom virus with it? Wouldn't that make things easier? If I was in, in the writer's room for, for Cyber Chase, I would have definitely suggested that because it would have, it would have been a less stupid decision. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think just... This film just really dropped the ball. But thankfully there are some good stuff. There is still some good stuff that you hear. As I said, the cast is mostly really good. Um, I really like the this film's cover, cover of the Scooby-Doo Where Are You theme. And uh, I also like how for some of the... For the cyber cyber characters, like the cyber gang, they p put on a more metallic or cyber filter on them. So I think that's actually really, that's a really neat detail. A great way to differentiate them. I do like uh, the tar monster in here. And um, the mystery vehicles, like whenever they're in like space, Roman Colosseum. And the mystery machine in the final round. Oh yeah, here's some more issues that just came to mind. The Cyber Dream and the other music montage are just, I don't know, they're just not very good. I'm just not a fan of their rhythms, their pacing and all. And like, it also skips through so many like, what possibly would have been great scenarios within the Cyber Dream montage. Like, here's something else that came to mind. Like, how about maybe, like, maybe if you wanted to keep the whole cyber theme of this movie, why not have it be Scooby-Doo in cyberspace? And maybe just have the whole game as cyber aspect take place on the moon, like the first level. That way, like, I don't know, that, that, I don't know if that would fix it, but that's just something that, that, that sounds a lot more interesting than just skipping through a bunch of interesting scenarios. But yeah, I just, I mean, Cyber Chase has its positives, and I do have a tad bit of nostalgia because this, of the, of these four films, this is the one I saw the most and liked as a kid. But it just really, really just drops the ball when it comes to these films and what they were wanting, trying to do with the formula. Because after Cyber Chase, the creative team left. Warner Brothers absorbed Hanna-Barbera into Warner Brothers Animation. There was also other things going on, like Warner greenlitting What's New Scooby-Doo, the live action movie was being filmed and they were also putting in like a lot of 
some of their money was put into like the advertisement of this film, including like some toys and the Cyber Chase video game. I just wish Warner Brothers could have just given the team, like, co complete creative control, just like on Zombie Island and Alien Invaders. But, <sighs> nope, they instead had to do 50-50. Two films with no studio interference and two films with studio interference. Except this one, except the difference with Cyber Chase is that studio interference actually kind of ruined it, whereas Witch's Ghost had studio interference, but it actually didn't ruin the film. Ugh, man, at least this isn't as bad as, like, say, Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. But, yeah, I'm just... Ugh, it's not as good as I remember. 